Hey guys, what's up? Brian Savage here with you, and uh, today, um, a continuation off yesterday, kind of, um, I will post the vlog from yesterday with a little bit today before I post this video that I'm doing now. So, um, you will have already seen that I'm doing a Rickin Bucker, the real deal, made in the USA, bass guitar. This, uh, like I said, this is the uh, um, bass player of the band and a very, very good friend of mine. It's his bass, and it's not just his bass. Uh, this is his dream. Uh, he's played bass almost his whole life since he was a kid, and he's always wanted a Rickenbacker, and he finally got him one. And this is brand new, except for the fact that he's taken it out um oh let's say 10 15 gigs maybe on it factory strings factory setup nothing's been touched uh except for he did put his strap locks on it maybe you can hear that that's loose that's something i need to rectify and fix uh the back one stayed stiff um, the intonation's a little bit off. Uh, he said, his, that's what he told me that the intonation was off. Um, so anyway, let's get on with this because Rickenbacker does not show anything on their website about how to properly set up their bass guitars. Um, well, I mean, they do show some, but they don't really show measurements or any of that kind of stuff. So. I, what works, works. And uh, so I kind of do the standard, the way I set up uh, a jazz or a P bass or anything else. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is check neck relief. I do that, I capo it at the first fret. We're gonna capo it. And then I want to hold the string down and this is a left-hander, so we're going to go this way. Now, hold the string down. Much debate to this. Some people say the 12th fret, this, that. I like to hold it at the body joint. And the reason I hold it at where the neck meets the body is that's the last place it's going to move from the truss rod. That's usually where the truss rod ends. So, we're going to hold it there. And at the 3, 5, 7th fret, I should be able, and this is a 12 thousandths. I don't know if it'll focus on that make it out or not, 0 0.012. And that's what we want between this seventh fret, the bottom of this fret, or the bottom of this string and the top of this fret should just slide in there. Now it's lifting that string and it's tight. So we're probably only about, I would say maybe 10, uh, eight to 10 thousandths on that one. Oh, we're way under here. I mean, we are just almost laying on the fret. So the truss rods need backed off a little bit. Uh, I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm going to put a new set of strings on the guitar. I also wanna go ahead and look at the action. Now, again, as you adjust the truss rod, the action will change, especially the first fret action or the nut action. It will change dramatically. I'll tell you, I'm so used to right-handed guitars, I get this thing set up to like I'm doing a righty. Um, so, sorry about the poopy camera work. We'll lay her down there. Maybe you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Now, I'm gonna measure this at the 12th fret. Um, and at the 12th fret, this thing has little rules on it. I highly suggest if you do setup work, get one of these. There's a million suppliers. Uh, this one came from um, thefretwire.com. That's where it came from. Uh, uh, they hooked me up. I got some stuff from them, and uh, this is one of the pieces I purchased from them. Uh, I'm looking for on this, I like to have um, on the small side, 
about one and a half mil and on the large side about two mil at the 12th fret. Yeah, I measure it in millimeters just because it makes it easy. And I am setting at one millimeter on that string, 0.75 on this one. Now he has not complained really about fret buzz. He said there's a little bit up here in the, up here there's a little bit of fret buzz, but uh, that's due, I would imagine, to the truss rods being too tight. Um, the nut action seems a bit high, but maybe not. Looks like we're 30 thousandths on the small G string. That's so hard to measure that way. I gotta be super careful here, boys. That one's good. That one's about 18. 18 to 20 thousandths is what you kind of want. So after we set it all up, we'll check all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm going to take the strings off, put new strings on it. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, and then we will... Uh, go through and take truss rod cover off, reset truss rod, we want to clean all the frets, we want to wipe it all down, we're going to do all that stuff to it. Um, check it all out and get her all back in uh, proper work and order. Now, again, this is brand new, only, like I said, maybe 10 gigs on it, so it has uh, uh, forgotten it's a guitar and remembered it's a tree, and I got to make it forget it was a tree and reminded it that it's a guitar now. So that is standard things to happen with a new guitar, even if something like a high quality, I'll not bash Rickenbacker because again, it's my bass player's dream guitar. So I'm going to be nice. All I will say is I've worked on a lot of different instruments and Rickenbacker, this is to you if you watch this video, re-engineer this crap. Crap. Two truss rods, crap. Not necessary. They give you a truss rod wrench. Don't fit in a hole. You got to make one. The saddles. No way to adjust individual saddle height. But hey, I can deal with that. That's not even the worst part of it. The worst part of it is, is if you want to change the intonation, see those screws down in there? You can't get to them without taking the daggone strings almost completely off, if not completely off. So that means I gotta take and every time I change the intonation, take all the strings out, put it back on. Take all the strings loose, take the bridge out, adjust it, put the bridge back down in there. Come on, Rick and Bacher. What do you charge, $3,000 almost for one of these things and then you, you have that in it? All right, that's all my bashing. I'm going to pause you here. I'll come back to you uh, whenever I've got uh, all the strings on it and uh, we're refixing up, okay? Okay, the big reveal. You'll get to see it as I do. Oh no, listen off. Obi, are you on the table? You get out of there. He does not want cat hair on his base case. Sorry about that. Looky there. I want you to look at that. Can you see? Is it focusing? I don't know. I can't tell. That paint. Paint. You're kidding me. Painted on the bolts. There's paint on the bolts. I mean, they are painted shut. Oh, dear goodness. Rickenbacker. Be nice, Brian. You wasn't going to bash them. Boy, they're beautiful. Yep. 
Yeah, my PRS truss rod wrench, of course, don't fit it. Will my little quarter get in there? Oh, it does. Well, that didn't have any tension on it. Neither did that one. So, with no strings, I had no tension. <sighs> My problem is, is that I didn't have enough neck relief. There was no tension on the truss rods. That's going to be fun to work out. I wonder if you'd be able to make this out. I Probably not. Can you guys see right there? Right there and right there. If you can, that's where the string has chewed into the finish onto this neck already. Yeah. On the top three frets, just on that big E string. I don't know if you guys will be able to make that out or not. Probably, I'm probably making you sick as a dog here, and I'm sorry. I'm on the phone now. My camera memory card filled up like that. I got to go buy another one. It's not working right. Luck of the draw, I guess. So uh, you're getting the old cheapo phone version now of it. Uh, nuts still good and in place. That's kind of how the nuts held on is by the uh, truss rod cover kind of holds up against it and uh, keeps it from moving, which is kind of odd. I like a little bit of a slot. Nice Rick and Backer stamped elephant ear tuners. All right, so that was step one. Step two is going to be, I'm going to clean this whole thing up, wipe it all down, get it all nice and shiny and pretty, put new strings in it. Okay, so time for new strings. And I got you sitting there so I can use both hands to open these bad puppies up. Let's see if Ernie Ball sent us anything. Yeah, what they send us here? The tone packs. What that goes with the tone polish? Okay, ducky. Putting back on it what came on it, 50 to 105s, 50 to 105s going back on. Now I'm going to very carefully stick it in the hole. It seems like I'm doing it backwards just because it's a lefty. Go underneath the pickup cover. Oh, that's a lovely sound. Now, when you do this, guys, especially on these here, hang on to this ball as you pull it through. Because you go yanking that string, let that ball, and it will come against here and beat the back of your guitar right up. So, don't be that guy. Now, I'm going to pick you up here just for a second. And this is what I wanted to show you. All right, we got, this is the one it goes in. Now, on most, you go one, two peg heads past, and that's how long to make the string. Now, on this Rickenbacker, it's kind of, they're widened out, and I found on Rick's that I go to the next peg head and just a little extra, and right there is where I'm going to clip it. Stick it down in the hole, wrap it around once, and then tune it up. So again, now when I do this string, you know, it goes in this peg head. I'm still, I'm going to say, okay, it's supposed to go in this one. I hold on to it, and then I move it to this one, and then, hard to do one-handed. But anyway, you get the idea. Hold it here, move it back here. It goes to there, so there's where I'm going to cut it, stick it in that hole. Same thing on this side. Same principle. Gives you two good wraps, and that's what uh, it's supposed to have. That's exactly how this came from the factory, and considering it's a brand new guitar, I'm still under factory warranty, we're going to put it right back to factory.
but better. It's actually going to work this time. Okay, so I'm going to string up, and then we'll do some uh, neck relief. All right. So I'm just finishing it up and uh, wiping off some fingerprints. I'm probably going to make some more because I got to go through all this tomorrow. Let's see what I'm going to go through. So we're going to do it real quick like this. Uh, we're going to check it from beginning to end. This doesn't have to be super tight. I'm not trying to make anything special happen here. Just hold it down there against the fret. Hold it at the body joint. Look at me unprepared. I said I want to do this quickly because I've already done it three times. And I'll do it probably three more times tomorrow as it sets. On both sides you have to measure this one. K put it at the first, hold it at the body joint at the three, five, seventh fret, 12 thousandths. And it is right there. I got the neck relief in it. What I did was I put the strings on it with uh, the truss rod nuts loose and let it set for a little bit. And it drew a little too much tension in it, which was what I wanted. I gotta turn this around and see this on what I'm doing. Lefties, I tell you. And uh, anyway, so uh put the strings on it. Oh yeah, that's nice, nice, nice. Right at 12 thou. No more fret buzz, none whatsoever. So now we can loosen this off. Tune to pitch. Now this is flat. So that so but it's uh, E flat. It's what we what we play in, so it's what it's tuned to. That's important to be tuned to the pitch that you play in. So, we're good there. Not too much. Intonation wise, measure that. Uh, chase the needle, so to speak. So, if it is sharp, move it back. If it's flat, move it forward. Um, that took a while because, again, every time I had to <laughs> loosen the strings, all four strings off. After loosening all four strings off, take the bridge out, move the saddle backwards or forwards. And I was lucky, I only had to do the E and the G string. So uh, the A and D was okay fine. But again, every time you do that, things want to wobble, wibble, wobble, wobble, wibble. It's such a pain in the butt, such a pain in the butt, but it's done. Now, I do fully expect tomorrow with these strings, after these strings have set on it, I'll put it back in the case, close the case up. Uh, I expect this neck to give a little more and me have to go back in there and tighten those truss rods down ever so slightly. Um, maybe just on one side, maybe on both sides, I don't know. Um, Something else I noticed on further inspection when I was taking the strings off the A and D string slots are so tight that the string pops in and out of them um, and At first I thought oh no, you know I, I, the Gauge was wrong and then I went through and I measured the gauges and I was right on 50 105s gauges were right It's just the way the slots were cut so I didn't mess with the slots, but I did have to kind of work the string down. And I noticed even when I put those strings back on it to even check it, they do not set all the way down to the bottom of the nut slot on the D and the A string on either one of them. And the factory strings don't either um, from the way it looks, but you know, it's so hard to tell. Am I seeing light under it? And is it a reflection off the truss rod cover? I took the truss rod cover off. It's still... I don't know. Maybe it's at the bottom of the slot. The slot's just cut like this, so it gives the perception that it's not. Uh, but it... The... Nut relief. It's a little high. It's a 21... Uh, 
22, 22, and 18. <laughs> um, that's the way the slots are cut, so it is what it is. Um, that'll probably work in a little bit, and this and that, and who knows? That that's not a big deal. If that gets to be a problem, we can put a new one in there, lickety split. Because again, it's uh, just but they barely they super glue them on there uh, a little bit, and then the truss rod cover actually kind of holds it in place so that the strings as you move them don't pop it out. Uh, it works. I've never heard of anybody losing their that falling out while they were playing or breaking unless they've been doing something crazy. So anyway, uh, guys, that's uh, it for the Rickenbacker. Uh, oh, no, no, no. We also have um, string height. And the string height, I forget what it was, but I know what I wanted to shoot for. And we are one mil on the G string. And we are one, two, five. Well, let's say one point three five maybe 1.40 uh, millimeters on the uh, E side that's at the 12th fret seems to play really nice there I can always adjust that uh, th that is actually easy to adjust with the strings on it but if you're going down in other words you're going to loosen off this and lower the string action uh, that's not too bad to do with it under string tension, but don't ever want to tighten it and raise the string action with it under string tension. Back the strings off because that's a lot of pressure pushing down on this. Again, this, this plate that's fit down in here is just thin chrome plated pop metal and uh, the saddles are aluminum and... Uh, that's a, just a good way to have to buy a new one. So if you're going to have to tighten it down and put, you know, pressure on it, loosen off the tension on the strings. If you can go and just loosen it off a little bit to lower them, you can do that under string tension. But then you'll have to tune back up to pitch, not standard. Don't set your guitar up in standard and then play half step down and wonder why it doesn't play right. Or play in drop C or something crazy like that and... You take it to a shop and you know they set you up in standard pitch it won't be right so anyway guys share the music share the love that's a rickenbacker bass made in the usa so absolutely support that see ya